designers that you have on board, because as you said, you've got some great range of designers. How would an emerging designer get involved with the project with the EFI? It's difficult because we we ask designers to provide uh, market access. So when you engage with us, you have to engage in product development and production every season. Yeah. And you have minimum quantities. Because we have quite a big structure and we have overheads and all the rest, so many quantities. So an emerging designer usually has problems with quantities. What we used to do, we interrupted it last year, but we start again in 2018, is to offer to uh, emerging designers from Africa the possibility of a period of mentoring and of support okay. in the market to grow and through helping them to, to, to put their things in a boutique in Milano, in Milano Fashion Week or in, or in the US with some partners so that they can start growing and then we can start working together production-wise as well. Whenever you see the UN, in this context you think cash cow to be milked. <laughs> get money out of debt. You don't give money to anybody, you give work. And the same is if you are an emerging designer, pay me this, pay me that. I'm not there to pay your trade fairs, your things and that. Thank I'm you. here to give you the introductions, I'm here to give you the support, the technical support you need to grow. And then you have to pay something back to me. And if you pay something back, you work with the artisans in your country or in the region. That's the way to pay back. So the designers that you have on board at the moment, I mean, there's this there's always this challenge with working in Africa. Many people, it's a very romantic idea that, oh, I really want to help Africa, I'm going to go in and try to do something. And there's many who are going and doing that, but then they realize the reality. Um, oh, it's tough. They hit the wall and then they have to leave. Um, yeah, but it's tough also because many people come in a disorganized way. You go to an African country as you go to Italy, no? look at product development. Italy is the product development base of the world of today. It's not the production anymore, unfortunately. It used to be. But it's the product development base. You go to Italy, you have small companies, you ask, can you develop these shoes in a second? They get you the last, the, so the heel, the sole, the insole, everything. Ta -ta 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 -ta. A week or so and you have everything. Two weeks maximum. To do this in, in, in Africa is more difficult. You don't have always the person to produce the last, so you have to go to another country. When you go there, you have to go first to look at what is available, and then you have to tailor your product development to them. How, through my work, because we focus on ethical fashion in Africa, how are we going to include these new theories, these new models of business, these new practices of circular fashion, of um, um, of recycling new materials, how are we going to implement that in Africa's, in Africa's value chain, the textile industry? I don't think these things are so new. These things are about being responsible. Yeah. And uh, if you work with artisans, you already do that. <coughs> because uh, artisans in Africa are accustomed to recycling materials. Yeah. An artisan is somebody who is able to make a product from the beginning to the end. The disaster came when greed came in and we tailorized the work to produce fashion. So we broke down this, the, the different tasks to make a bag, to make a, a jacket, to make a pair of shoes into several small tasks that are always performed by the same person. So the work of this person who always does the same stitch here yeah. is worth nothing. The work of the artisan who makes the whole of the shoe is worth a lot, is worth a lot. Is more, is more precious. So if you work in this framework, giving dignity to people, giving good work to people, working with artisans, then you naturally access all these new things, the circular economy, because you find ways to have less impact, to, 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 to find more time to put people, to have a more social, positive social impact, to recycle stuff and this and that. And though this is feasible in Africa, we've done recently a collection of shoes, recycling the tires, or, or for the soles, or, or we have recycled plastic in many different ways. We have recycled the blankets of the army into bags. We have recycled the shukas of the blankets of, of the Maasai people into, into bags. We have recycled the shirts to make the lining of the bags for Vivian Westwood so many times. So all these things are not so new. They are innovative because we have lost connection to them. But if you are responsible, if you work with artisans, if you work with people, 
you naturally do that. You've been in the game for a little while now, and what impact have you seen with the work that you are doing on the small scale? Manner? We do impact assessment, which is to say we have a team of social workers, wherever we work, we do an assessment, a social assessment of how the life of people changes through the work they get. So through our impact assessment, we see the communities where we work, we have life has changed. Housing, sanitation, access to healthcare, education, kids go to school, girls go to school. We have women who own property and who didn't own anything in the family before. We have women who are the breadwinner of the family and therefore they have gained a new form of respect in their society, in their community. Impact is there. You measure impact, you see that. But this kind of impact is an impact which is directly on society, on the families. So a family where you have this kind of income, you have the kids who go to school, you have the kids who, are, who, who have health care, you have proper housing, you create a new society. This is about building the social capital of tomorrow. Start doing things seriously, to engaging, to remove the bottlenecks and to give people dignified working conditions as employees, as artisans, that's, that's the future.